What's up guys, it's Wes recording live. I want to talk about a certain person in India. He was a physician. He might have been around in the 8th century BCE because some of his styles, the way it's written, in, he, what he did was he took, a, um, he basically took, he took an earlier type of um, Ayurvedic uh, collection of texts and he edited them and he added his own findings and research to them and then they became renamed the Charaka Samhita and that's, and that's how he popularized them. He was very, very, he was also being identified as a native of Kashmir. If Hippocrates was the father of medicine, he was the granddaddy of medicine. That's my quote for you guys. The term a physician who um, fails to enter the body of a patient with a lamp of knowledge and understanding that can never treat diseases, he should first study all the factors including environment which influence a patient's disease then prescribe treatment. It is more important to prevent the occurrence of disease than to seek a cure. The Charaka's contribution, contributions to the fields of physiology, embryology, and how do I say this? Ideology, ideology, the study of causation or origination are very profound. They've been recognized in India. They need to be recognized over here. Charaka is generally considered as the first physician to present the concepts of digestion, homeostasis of, of optimal digestion, proper, uh, uh, you know, proper maintenance of metabolism and immunity. A body functions because it contains, certain, you know, it, it has to be kept in balance. He emphasized on this. He stressed illness is caused when balance, when imbalances in the body are formed. You know, when the original balances amongst a person's, you know, a person's individual balance is, is disturbed. This allows bad, um, bad germs and stuff to get in the body. He was aware of it. And uh, to restore balance, he prescribed medicinal herbal drugs. Although he was aware of germs in the body, it's not. He was not. It wasn't really just the entirety of the. It wasn't. He wasn't. He didn't give it the primary importance. Although. He gave it close enough importance, he actually recognized it, but he did not list it as a primary factor of all disease. He also talked about psychosomatic, you know, he was talking about the psych, like psychological, although his interpretation of it was um, uh, in the bl intellectual blasphemy, which includes immoral and antisocial activities due to the perversion of intelligent patience and memory, that psych or psychic, which in modern terms, you should actually just say psychological stressors because it affects the brain, it can affect the body because it makes, you know, HPA axis go out of whack and that can cause inflammation to occur. That's the equivalent of that. Time and season, the environment factor. Unwholesome contact with objects of the senses or whatnot, somatic factors. Want to know what somatic means? Or relating to the body, especially as distinct, especially as distinct from the mind. The cells of the body, in contrast to the germline cells, somatic, you know, whatever. Yes. Although. Although I, although I am, Somatic psychology, etc., etc. It's based around the cause of somatics, basically. Um, it 
He also considered fa uh, psychosomatic factors. Basically, um, this is a, like an early takeoff on a somatic psychotherapy. Even uh, a field that even Sigmund Freud, actually, and uh, Wilhelm uh, Reich talked about, mentioned and worked in a, from time to time. So this is some early, pretty much early converse of that shit. But, um, but mainly he um, he also. He listed, at the time, he listed 20 disease-causing germs. But he, he says that for them to be able to enact, you know, there's got to be, you have to, there are imbalances in your body. That when imbalances in your body is when they will take their, was when they will take hold and will cause infection. And he emphasizes on prevention compared to curing, and I already said this, but he also... He, he made a massive of types of different medicinal drugs, like oral medicines, eye drops, throat gargles, uh, nasal inhalations, ointments, creams, lotions, medicated oils, and medicated ghees, which is their way of saying clarified grass-fed butter, suppositories, tampons, cotton swabs, enemas, douches, bandages, and all kinds of other shit he came up with. Charaka Sanhita describes... 149 important diseases, 341 plants and plant products, 177 animal products, and 64 minerals that were described along with the properties of most of them for the treatment of diseases. Although some of the minerals, probably like arsenic, mercury, and shutter, are probably mentioned, which is also one of my critiques. Another one of my critiques. Um... Most well, interesting fact is there is a description of uh, air conditioning of houses, cooling in the ho of the home in the summer and heating in the home in the winter. He was on pro he w he ruled out dogmatism in the field of medicine. He wanted emphasis on that lack and removal of dogmatism. He wanted authentic testimony, direct observation, interference, and logical reasoning. He also wanted people to a physician a proper physician to devote his to devote himself to the treatment of patients who are who are incurable, although I criticize this next part and say well, he said reject those who are incurable. I criticize that and say provide comfort to those who are incurable. But then again, I, I'm trying to be critical and praise the good parts and criticize the bullshit as I go along. Chiraka also suggested that rule the rule of the state must ever, be ever fucking diligent by law to protect genuine physicians and ban the practice of quacks. Failing of su with such, which want quacks will endanger the life and property of the people. This is why it's important. Rules of admission to medical sciences were strict. Before a student was admitted for the study of a medical science, he was fully examined with reference to his physical qualities and mental aptitude. He also had to take the oath of initiation in the presence of respectable persons of society to lead his life in such a way that which was, would be conductive to his study. After completion, he was to be further examined before getting admission to the profession. He was also he was scrutinous as hell about that, which I'm glad. No doubt Chidaka conceived the germ of an early mystic, magically interpreted version of the germ theory of causation of many diseases, but he rejected the idea that germs are the only causative factors of disease. That's the main thing. He admitted that germ theory was there, but he also admitted that he also considered the psychological and, you know, other type of factors and the environment and whatnot and different factors as stressors negative forms of negativities from psychological and the environment and all that and germs were and and, and and were stressors and but he also emphasized on when your body is out of balance that's when germs can call can get in and infest or when inflammation can start this is the precursor to saying that in modern medicine he advanced the theory it's the imbalance of an individual that that which primary causes for disease and various germs may grow in the that bad stuff may from outside in the environment could come in the body or the bad shit that's already probably always there just so low and kept that held down could start could get the um could get a could get a uprise could take their chance and infect you when the congenial environment's there 
both this is, he emphasizes on keeping maintaining your metabolism and keeping yourself in proper balance based on your own constitution. That's what I'm saying. It's what he emphasized. Correction of the balance, the imbalances in the body constitutes the basic principle of all therapeutics. This is a unique feature of Ayurvedic concept of diseases and other managements as enunciated by Chodaka in his monumental work. So yeah, this is a, this is a, so you get what I'm saying. You see, I, you see my criticism, but you also I hope you understand my praises as well. No doubt Chodaka conceived the germ theory of causation of disease, but he ought, but he rejected the idea. So anyway, sorry, let me go. Sorry, I'm almost about to repeat that. Sorry. Surprisingly, though, Chodaka's emphasis on the prevention of diseases instead of curing the theories of immunity, digestion, and metabolism, and maintaining homeostasis and keeping yourself in balance as a prevention of most any disease, the description of general nursing home, maternity home, and the beginnings of the best medical ethics, emphasis on experimental scientific methodology, and saying fuck you to dogmatism, uh, talking about heredity and many advanced concepts of pathogenesis and management diseases bears testimony to its relevance in today in modern medical science. Chiraka was a pioneer in all these different concepts. Oh, by the way, he also talked about um, heredity, you know, genetics. Her, what you would her, her, inherit through the sperm of the father and the ovum of the mother. He also talked about that. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, talk about an early physician. And that's why the title say, will say, If Hippocrates was the father of medicine, then Chiraka was the granddaddy. Although I do, uh, there's another few points I have to criticize. Back then when Chiraka was around, he, I think there was might have been some documents mentioning that Chiraka said, let your infants breastfeed on the day they're, the, oh, the day they're born. But I got to find hard proof of that before I can say that was true, completely true. And I don't have access to it yet. I only have a few PDFs that might be mention something related to that proof and say that he said this. And back in ancient India and ancient Greece and ancient certain ancient Middle Eastern and other cultures and what ancient in the ancient um, European cultures and even certain Native American tribes like the Aztecs and the Mayans called it taboo to feed a baby colostrum, which obviously is bullshit because colostrum is an important pre-milk fluid that you have to have to simulate the, the um to simulate. Uh, to make to forge most of your immune system in your gut. That's kind of the point. So if he did say that, then great. If he didn't, then I can criticize the shit out of him for that. You know, for for a long time, you know, colostrum was a st cow colostrum grass fed was a staple food amongst the uh, the Amish and several other different cultures and across the planet for a long time, but not quite as far back as this. I pretty I, of course obviously, but you get my point. His ideas, the, the shit, the core concepts he emphasized the fuck out of were important for modern medical science, and they are to this very day. But there are still criticisms from different branches of Ayurveda. You know, they believe in using fucking urine as part of treatment or pre-treating herbal remedies, which is stupid. And also purposely doping heavy metal minerals into it as well, and then pre-boil it, and then boil them and piss afterwards. Which is, like I said, bullshit. Because that does nothing but add toxic accumulative toxicity to the people you're claiming to treat. In spite of the criticisms, there are good points. It's kind of it's the same thing back then as it was the same but back then as it is today. And if you look at the text, you use this is what you would do with those ancient traditional medicine texts and with modern medicine. Understand what's bad. Use, make, find a way to test and experiment with the shit that might be good. Take, use what's possibly use the good. Do, discard the neck, the the not the the bad. Use the good, discard the bad. It's the same kind of shit. And also verify some of those ancient, those ancient methods through modern scientific rigorous study. That's what we need in this world. And I am done talking. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were. And I hope you um. Read the description, it links in the description, and I hope you uh, take care, everybody. This is Wes. See you around.